What's up, stranger friends? I hope you're having a wonderful day. Thank you so much for clicking on today's video all about sustainability. So I wanted to make a video over the course of a couple of days just showing you things that we've changed in our day-to-day -day routine. It is things that are relatively simple but not always talked about here on YouTube and so I thought I would try and compile it into a little video. This by no means is absolutely every little single thing that we're doing but I thought it'd be a great place to start. So if you'd like to see little swaps that we've been making, keep on watching. Morning guys, so the first thing I wanted to share is using up your veggie scraps. And this is something that we've been really trying to work on a lot more lately because since we moved to Kelowna, we don't have a green bin here, which is a little bit frustrating. And we also live on a strata complex that does not allow compost. So there's nowhere for our food scraps to go and I had to get really creative. So as you guys know, I've been really trying over the years to juice as much of that kind of stuff as possible. But there's some stuff that you just don't feel like juicing. And so what we've been doing is whenever we've been cooking, if there is vegetable scraps, we end up putting them into this bag that lives in the freezer and it is for soup stock. Along with everything that I've collected over the past maybe month or so and froze, I went through my fridge and I just grabbed out anything that was looking a little questionable. Like I have some celery, I have a zucchini that I grew but it has not grown 100% properly. I have some spring onions that are looking a little bit done and same with these carrots. One of them has a bite out of it. I don't know why. I always start off with a little bit of extra garlic and onion. While that's on the stove, another thing that you can be doing is evaluating what you're eating that comes in plastic and whether or not you can grow it yourself. And so for us, that was something like tomatoes. We love cherry tomatoes, but they almost always come in a plastic punnet. And so I said to Glenn, okay, if we're gonna grow anything, why not grow that? Because then at least for several months of the year, we're not having to contribute to that plastic. Again, we'll never be perfect, but it's looking for these little areas in your day-to-day -day life where you can just cut it down, at least for a little while, or work on it, or put in some effort some way. So I'm gonna pick some tomatoes and maybe add some to that broth. So let's add in some of the tomatoes that I just picked. And I also grabbed some herbs from the garden. Uh, I'm putting in some fresh rosemary sprigs, some basil, and some parsley. I'm also gonna add some black peppercorns, just whole peppercorns. And a couple of bay leaves. Bay leaves are awesome. They give things a really nice deep flavor. Put maybe four of them in there. You don't actually eat the bay leaves, so don't forget. And then I'm also gonna add some umame powder. And this is totally not necessary. If you don't have it, don't worry. I just didn't have any mushrooms in my stock mix and I love the taste. So I'm adding umame powder, which gives it a very similar kind of flavoring. Awesome. Okay, I'm gonna cover it all with water and then just let it simmer for about an hour. You basically let it simmer until it looks like a soup sludge. And then you strain all the veggies out of it and put the liquid into mason jars. And make sure to leave a space at the top if you're planning on freezing. Uh, I always let these cool down to room temperature and then I put the lid on and then I put it in the freezer making sure they are standing upright and definitely have enough room to expand because that is where you do run into problems with glassware in the freezer is if you don't leave enough room for whatever is freezing to expand. So another thing that we can do is reevaluate what we're purchasing and I know that this one is a hard one and it's hard for me too. I like to shop and I know I'm not alone there but the way that we are currently set up in our model is not working and fashion is a huge polluter. I know I shared this on my Instagram stories the other day, but there is 26 billion pounds of clothing sent to landfill every single year and like 95% of that could be recycled. And that is, that's too much, that's ridiculous. Realistically speaking, we're probably not gonna stop shopping because we're human, we like nice stuff, we like things but we can reevaluate how we're shopping and how we're giving back to the system. So take for example, this summer transitioning into fall. 
I really didn't need to go full shopping. Like I have enough stuff, but I did need a couple of key pieces. And I knew that I was looking for some type of like warm, cozy sweater. I really wanted a black puffer vest because I live in British Columbia and I feel like that is just a prerequisite for living here. I was looking for a pair of cropped denim just to show off my little ankle boots and stuff like that. That's what was kind of on my mind. I jumped onto ThreadUp and I put everything into the filters and I just started scrolling. This past year, I've collaborated with a couple of different consignment shops, but most recently it has been ThreadUp. And I think that that is such a cool platform. It's the world's largest online thrift store. You can narrow down everything when you're shopping. So your sizes, your brands, if it's premium or luxury or just basic clothes, everything is there for you. And I like it because I find that when I go thrift shopping just out in you know the wilderness of thrift land, there is so much stuff to go through. And if you don't have a long period of time you might not find what you want but being able to filter that on a website makes a huge difference and you find exactly what you want i already shared a couple of these pieces over on instagram but i want to show you because i think a lot of people get it in their head that when you're thrifting things look old or worn or they look really used and that's just not the case some of this stuff actually still has a tag on it it's brand new and i just think we need to get back into the habit of understanding that clothes can have longer lives and we can all share and use them because there is absolutely enough out there. So the dress I'm wearing is one of the pieces that I got. It is a super beautiful fine and soft knit. It's originally from BCBG Max Azria. Is that how you pronounce it? I always mess that one up. The original estimated retail price of this was around $270 and I got it for $40. It looks brand new. Here's an example of how I would probably style a dress like this. I love wearing leather jackets. You guys know I wear them year-round. And I wear it with a longer purse, maybe a crossbody, and my boots. So the denim that I found is a super soft and stretchy pair from Leg and Bone. They originally retailed for $253 and I got them for $52. They are a gorgeous wash, super soft, and they fit like a freaking glove. I cannot believe that these are even used. It's hard finding jeans, but when you know that you know you are a certain size and a certain brand, it makes it so much easier to thrift because you know exactly what you're looking for. I paired the denim with a top that I previously got on ThreadUp last spring, and I love it. I think it was under 15 bucks and it's originally from Zara. But yes, and then I would probably style this like this. I put on my consigned Gucci loafers with my consigned YSL bag. I have the Zara top underneath and this gorgeous knit sweater from Vince. This originally retailed for $190 and I got it for $27.99. All right, this last outfit is same, same, but different. I'm wearing the same Vince sweater, but I've paired it with the black puffer vest that I got. This one retailed originally for $250 from BCBG and I got it for $42. So this is how I'd probably style it. Just put a quick little sweater underneath, some cute boots, jeans, and a top. I'm hoping that by showing you these clothes, it reminds you that everything that you want that you're out there looking for is probably already there and is available to you used. Please take a second, go take a look. There's so many treasures online and you just gotta search and find them. If you were inspired by my little thrift haul and you wanna check out ThreadUp for the first time, I have a code that'll give you up to 50% off. It's Carissa50 and I'll leave it just down in the info box for you. I also had to remind you that if you live in the United States, you can sell your clothes to ThreadUp and send them in. If you live in Canada, they unfortunately don't have a service for that yet, but I just consign all of my things locally. But a reminder that put your clothes back into the system after you're done with them, somebody will love it and use it. Let's move on to the next set of things that I've been trying to include in my life to be a little bit more sustainable. Okay, so another idea for you guys is to bring your own containers when you're getting takeout. This is something that Glenn and I have really been trying to do lately. I've created this whole little container of things that we keep in our vehicle and when we go out we can use it for leftovers or we can use it when we pick up to go. When I mentioned this on Instagram some of you guys said that some places that you've been to won't accept containers but all you have to do is just call and place your order and just ask them to plate it regularly and then when you get there you can just scoop it into your own container. Sometimes I don't know why I guess contamination they don't want you to bring your own stuff and they don't want to put it in their kitchen but I don't know, we've never had a problem. Just be honest and just say I'm trying to create less garbage and I'm saving you money so you don't have to use a takeaway container. So today, we are getting sushi. And uh, I brought my containers, so let's go. 
So as I said, I keep a couple of different containers in a basket in the car so that when we go out, we have potential things to put our food in. This is what fit our sushi order today. So, yum. Um, I mean, same topic, but not same topic. Another thing that obviously you can do trying to lead a more sustainable life or being more aware of your footprint is to become vegetarian or vegan. If you don't want to go that far, it's totally fine. You can always just eat meatless for a couple of days a week. It makes a huge difference. But uh, food related stuff, I think is somewhere where we can really improve. It's super simple to bring your own containers places. And it's also super simple to not include meat a couple of nights a week. And those are things that make huge impacts. I also had to show you guys what I've been using in the kitchen for food storage. We love using glass. I feel like it's probably the safest thing to be storing your food in. I do everything with it. I heat and freeze these, um, obviously very carefully, but I've never had a problem. Um, the lids I just keep over there, and if a lid doesn't fit, then I have these super handy stretchy silicone toppers. They kind of just stretch and expand to go over whatever lid you have. Uh, we have a ton of different mason jars and glassware. Whenever I use like spaghetti sauce or something, I'll keep the jar and then I can put all of the things that I make back into them. I also love using beeswax wraps. These ones are getting a little bit old, but they are so well used in this household. Absolutely love that instead of cling wrap. Uh, something new that I've found that I've been absolutely loving are these little bags. They're for dry goods and you can see what you put in them, which is a total game changer. So these are great. Um, I love these silicone reusable bags. These are fantastic too because they stand straight up when they're full and then you just put this like plastic slide across the top. They can also be frozen. They're really handy. So it just kind of comes down to there's no excuse anymore for reaching for plastic right away. There's so many different options of what you could be using. Just go and explore them. I've also written a really cool blog post on different stuff that I'm using at the grocery store, like these produce bags. Just take a look in the info box. Everything will be linked for you. Welcome to the last stop on our sustainability tour. This is my bathroom. So when I was looking at making different swaps in my life and figuring out, okay, what are areas that I can work on? A big area that I really wanted to tackle was my period. Periods create a lot of freaking waste and they don't have to. And that is something that blew my mind once I got into my new routine I realized not only how much better it was obviously for the environment but like how much easier it was why haven't we been taught this the whole time I feel like I wasted years of my life with just shitty period products and feeling uncomfortable for so long for no reason five or six years ago I swapped to a menstrual cup it's a little bit weird at first I'm not gonna lie a lot of things are a little bit weird at first, but then you gradually find, oh my gosh, this is actually overall so much easier. There's a million different period cup videos online, so I'm not going to regale you with all of my experience, but I would love to link one of my absolute favorite period cup reviews. I'm sure you guys already know, it's Samantha Ravendahl's. Did she change her last name? I don't know, maybe. Well. Samantha's video, what is my hand still doing here? It is probably the funniest review I've ever seen of a product in general. She did awesome, so I will leave that for you guys to watch. But I love using my period cup every single period. And then the second thing that I use is Thinks underwear. I started using Thinks a couple of years ago and you guys might remember the video that I did doing my initial review on them. I'll also link that below for you. But I have used them every single period since i bought them for my friend i bought them for my mother i have given them away for christmas like they are a must-have if you are a person with a period you need things they are just the handiest little things so i own probably around eight pairs now i think if you had maybe five to eight pairs that would work really well because then you're not scrambling for more during your period but usually i just use them as like a backup method so i have my period cup in and i know that it probably won't spill or get too full but if by some chance it did i'm protected i also really love using thinks on the days where my period isn't heavy enough for a cup so maybe the first day when i'm starting my period or the last day where i'm just spotting it just makes it so much nicer that you're not wearing a pad that's chafing and gross and sweaty you're wearing underwear that feel normal and smell normal and look normal and it just i don't know it makes your period a way more pleasant experience the next thing that i changed over was 
and this is gonna be weird to some of you, but it's so not weird to me. It's weird now that people don't use these. I bought a bidet. I love my bidet. I'm looking at purchasing a travel bidet because I love my bidet so much. Oh my goodness, I just, I'm a freak, I know. You need to get one. <laughs> Bidets are a little device that attach to your toilet and it basically sprays water up towards your butt and sprays your butt clean. I've been trying to push these on absolutely everybody that I know because it's weird that we use toilet paper on our butts. There I said it. We're just like smearing poop. It's not actually cleaning you. It's very strange. So it looks like this and it just attaches to the side of your toilet. There's two buttons. One of them is for the actual water and the other one is for the temperature. We don't actually have ours hooked up to the hot water and I bought one that has the option of it, but honestly, I don't even think that you need to. The water isn't that cold. It's just room temperature. So this front knob is what we actually use for the water pressure and then it's just attached to the toilet right there. It's totally gonna spray out of the toilet, so don't be alarmed. Usually my butt would be in the way and it wouldn't spray water everywhere, but I wanted to show you. You turn the nozzle and that little guy in the back squirts water up and out at you at like a gentle little squirt and you can obviously put the pressure up using the nozzle I also found that having the bidet was really handy especially while I had my period as well Because there's sometimes where you just want to feel fresh, but you don't want to have a full shower Scoot your butt back tilt your pelvis sounds so weird um, What else is I gonna say obviously they're great to clean you but you use way less toilet paper We obviously still have toilet paper in the house. I feel it is a necessity, but we were able to at least cut in half what we use if not more it's incredible how much longer a roll will last us now that we have bidets. So I have one on our main toilet in the bedroom and then I also have one on another bathroom downstairs so Highly recommend. The last thing that I wanted to share in this little sustainability video has to do with removing your makeup. And I've talked about these so many times online. Gonna talk about it once more, the face halo. I am so in love with microfiber cloths for removing your makeup. It makes it so much easier. You can use it just with water. You can use it with micellular water. Anything that will make it damp and uh, it takes your makeup off your face and I keep a jar of fresh ones right next to the sink So I'm always ready for when I need one and then after it's used you just let it dry and then chuck it in the laundry Mine stay relatively white Although I definitely have noticed some of them have gotten a little bit grimier than others But I just love that you can keep reusing them and reusing them I hope you guys enjoyed following me around and seeing the different swaps and different changes that I've made in our home lives to try and be more sustainable I think that the biggest thing to come back to is that no one is going to be perfect. So Don't have that as your goal I'm probably never going to be waste free. I will probably never be plastic free, but I can do my damnedest to make an effort at lowering that, lowering the consumption and being aware of how I can do better. And I think that that is something that is a very relatable thing for the average person that we probably will never be waste free. But if our goal is to just make changes where we can, that is 100% attainable. So I hope that this gave you inspiration to take a look at what your habits are, what your daily consumption is, and where you can make little tweaks and changes and things like that. So. Thank you guys so very much for watching. Don't forget everything that I spoke about, I'm linking down below in the info box, including the ThreadUp discount that I have. So that is there for you if you would like to try thrifting on their website. I wanted to say a huge thank you to you guys for all of the beautiful comments that you left on my last video. I was like full on choking up reading some of them. Glenn was reading them out to me in bed and I was like, I can't take it anymore. I just, they're too nice. Thank you. I, a lot of the time forget that what I do has any value and it just makes me feel like when I disappear that nobody will care. So it, it means a lot that you guys do care and that you took the time to message me because, oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, if there's anything that I can teach you or anything you would like to learn from this channel or anything you want to see on here, please let me know. I know that so many of you say, oh, film whatever you want, but like, that, that, I need help, I need help. What do you wanna see? Do you still like watching makeup videos? Do you still like TMI Tuesdays? Oh my God, TMI Tuesdays. Can that still be a thing? I would like for that to still be a thing. Let me know, what do you wanna see? What do you wanna know? What do you wanna learn? Leave it down below in the comments where I will have the best time ever reading them. Uh, that's it, that's all. I have nothing more for you. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching today's video. I will see you very soon, bye.